Okay, so yesterday, several big reports on the DCU were released that talked about Ezra Miller's Flash, The Rock, and also some things about what's happening with Wonder Woman in the upcoming James Gunn full reboot, soft reboot, that isn't a proper reboot, but it's still a reboot. People on the internet love nothing more than someone reading a news article out to them, and that's exactly what we're going to be doing in this very video. We're going to be breaking down what was said, going over what guns debunked, and also our thoughts on the entire situation. If you enjoy it, please hit the thumbs up button, and don't forget to subscribe for update videos on the news as we get it. Gun and Saffron will be unveiling some of their upcoming 10-year plan very shortly, and we'll be going through all of that, so make sure you don't miss out. Now firstly, I want to talk about the Ezra Miller thing, and also give my thoughts on what I think's happening with The Flash. IGN and Variety both did some things covering it, and according to them, sources have told Variety that Warner Brothers Discovery executives are still willing to work with Miller. According to the report, the fact that Miller has stayed out of trouble since they began mental health treatment last summer has reopened the door to Miller appearing as The Flash again in the future. The Flash movie, which is slated for release November 4, 2023, and will reportedly feature a lot of DC characters as it borrows from the Flashpoint story arc from the comic and restarts everything, is slowly growing its cast whilst also losing a few faces. Now, we do know that Henry Cavill was due to cameo in this, but this was cut in the latest screening after he was kicked to the curb. Guy didn't deserve it, in my opinion, and honestly, I think that's the thing that's caused the biggest uproar in the DC fandom, especially because Gunn seems to be keeping other stuff. I really think the first move in the DCU should have been announcing new movies so that people could get excited, but instead we had a wave of firings which just put a black cloud over the entire thing before we even knew what was happening. There's also the fact that Miller's been a very, very controversial figure, and to see them potentially getting to keep their role whilst we lose Cavill is no doubt going to annoy some people, because... Yeah, I, I, I'm fully on board the Keep Cavill team. Now, the article then goes on to talk about the crimes that Miller's been accused of and the fact that they were charged with felony burglary out in Vermont. Miller has denied these charges and the hearing for it will be happening on the 13th of January. IGN then go over all the stuff that Warner Brothers have been doing behind the scenes and they say, The past summer's legal issues led to multiple reports including Warner Bros was planning to part ways with Miller for future DC films. The company was also apparently planning multiple scenarios regarding the upcoming Flash movie, including scrapping it entirely. Then in August, Miller apologised for their recent behaviour, saying they were struggling from complex mental health issues. The apology tour continued, as Miller reportedly met with WB Discovery executives to save the Flash movie. In that meeting, Miller reportedly reaffirmed their commitment to the movie, calling the Flash one of their favourite characters to play. Miller reportedly returned his set for the Flash reshoots in October, which was a sign that WB was going ahead with the film. We also know there's already a script written for Flash 2, which was reportedly put together just in case the Flash does well. Of course, the entire future plan for DC is still up in the air, thanks to the recent creative takeover by James Gunn and Peter Safran. Wonder Woman 3 has already apparently been scrapped, along with Cavill and Johnson's departures. Cavill and Gal Gadot reportedly shot cameos for the Flash movie that have been cut as part of Gunn and Safran's plans. Now with all this, you have to bear in mind that the decision over whether to keep Miller or not boils down to Gunn and Safran. Man of Steel 2 had a script in the works and that was scrapped, so the Flash 2 having one doesn't mean it's greenlit. Now personally, I think whatever's happening with Ezra Miller and the Flash is going to remain a closely guarded secret until after the movie is out. I really doubt Warner Brothers is going to announce anything until after the movie's released and they can see what the general feeling around it is. Makes absolutely no sense to talk about recasts until they know how it's performed, and saying Ezra is out could ruin the promotion of the film. Warner Brothers have already booked a Super Bowl slot for the trailer, and they are clearly banking on this movie being big. It'll see both Michael Keaton and Ben Affleck playing Batman, and they clearly saw that No Way Home money, which is why they're risking a lot on it. There was a comment made recently that said The Flash was supposed to be the best DC movie since The Dark Knight, and it joins the pantheon of films that have also been called that. Every f***ing DC film is that. Shazam 2 is going to be the best DC film since the last DC film that was the best DC film since The Dark Knight. I got actually reply to someone asking about this, and he said, I don't know what's out there about Ezra, but our slate is 8 to 10 years, but we will only be announcing some of it this month. I call BS on this, because the guy really checks out rumours on his films, and he's debunked so much that I think, there's no way he wouldn't have seen the stuff about Ezra Miller that's pretty much been a constant news cycle for the past year or whatever. 
I think he's done this because, again, Warner Brothers haven't made a decision, so they don't want to put anything out about it yet. Now, I've always said that if DC reboot then, they need to do a full reboot because the backlash over actors they've cut will end up being too much. You can't keep some, especially those as controversial as Ezra Miller, and get rid of fan favourites without it causing issues. Over the last couple of years, we've seen multiple, multiple actors fired from things because of allegations, and if Ezra gets charged, it's double standards to keep them. Even Gunn himself was fired from Marvel over tweets, and to see someone keeping their job after being charged with a crime would be a PR disaster in my opinion. Now, Zachary Levi also released a statement about the rumours, and he said, I-, I have no idea what's ultimately going to happen to me. I think I'm in a pretty good position. I think we made a great movie. I think it's going to do well, reasonably well. I hope so. But again, regardless of that, if they decide at some point that, hey, this is the way we got to go, I mean, then, you know, them's the breaks. That's how it goes. And I hope that I, I hope that people enjoyed, at whatever point I finished playing the role of Shazam, I hope people enjoyed my tenure playing the role and that they come with me to whatever else I get to go and do. That's it. Okay. So I don't want to, it's, it's hard for me to see all these random comments and, and, and like basically lies and things that people were throwing around online and not want to respond because I hate lies. I hate deceit. I hate injustice so much. Um, and so I want to set records straight. By the way, so does James. He's been doing this for a long time. That's why he's so active on Twitter because he really wants people to know what's up truly and wanting to set records straight. And so it's, you know, that, that's why you'll see act, action from me or him or other people coming to defense. It's not because we want to get tied up in some random argument with an internet troll. It's because we're trying to help cut through all of the, this random, you know, deceitful banter that just keeps going around and around because a lot of people who are very good, kind people who really like Shazam or these other things are getting worried like, oh, is this all falling apart? Is this all going away? Everyone just take a breath. I know we've seen some characters, some actors that are taking an exit and I know that's difficult. That's difficult for even me. You know what I mean? I was hoping I got to work with a lot of these folks, but it's just not the way it's going to go down right now. And I, I think you all need to, whoever out there is still like all drummed up and pissed off, like just trust that James is so, look, if you haven't watched what he did with Guardians, which was a total niche property that he actually brought really awesome life to, and his reboot of Suicide Squad that was better than the first one, he really made something incredible there. He understands comic books, guys. He understands world building. He understands how to do right by the canon and also by the, by the characters and also by the audience. And Peter's there to be an, he's an incredible diplomat and business person. I've worked with him now for years. Just breathe. It's, it's going to be okay. It's going to be better than okay. So lots of things to take from that. But I, I think the main thing is that Zach doesn't know. Like at all. And again, I think it's all going to depend on how his second movie does. Aquaman 2 is also coming out this year. And I think they've not released a statement on that for the exact same reason. Jason Momoa has clearly been working on something with DC that a lot of people suspect is Lobo, but it makes no sense to release news of them being out before their movies come out. Anyway, that kind of takes us into the Variety article, which starts off by saying, As 2023 kicks off, DC bosses Gunn and Saffron continue to sift through the rubble, and will soon reveal their three-year interconnected vision for the cinematic universe, which won't include Cavill's Superman or Wonder Woman at all. A pretty big sentence to start with, and firstly, I want to go over what this means. Now, Gunn and Saffron have both been going on about their 8-10 to year plan that all depends on the success of their universe in the initial stages. They've actually only signed a contract for, for what I think is the next four years, and depending on how well that does, they can keep going or we'll get another reboot of the reboot. Yay! Now, the, now the second part of this says that the slate won't contain Wonder Woman at all. Gunn has since come out and debunked this, with him saying on Twitter that it's not true. Now, people at Variety mentioned Cavill, but they didn't mention Godot, so whether that means she's back or not, we just don't know. She's one of the only actors from the original lineup that hasn't released a statement, and we still don't know whether she's in or whether she's Gal or not. However, Gunn's statement makes it seem like she's potentially not out, but who knows, we might get that Jennifer Holland Wonder Woman movie coming out before we know it. Now, from here it says, but things could have gone in an alternate direction. Behind the scenes, a different group made a play for control of DC. Not long after the Warner Brothers Discovery merger closed in April, Dwayne Johnson directly pitched CEO David Zaslav on a multi-layer plan for Black Adam and a Cavill-led Superman. The two properties would interweave, setting up a Superman vs. Black Adam showdown, sources say. 
Black Adam producers Haram Garcia, who's Johnson's former brother-in-law, and both Flynn were also part of the brain trust looking to take DC down a new path. Other sources confirmed the meeting but downplayed any discussion of Black Adam's future. Although the move took place amid a power vacuum created as former DC head Walter Hamada and Warner Brothers film chief Toby Emmerich prepared to exit it, it ruffled feathers internally, sources add. Dwayne went around everyone, which didn't sit well, says one. Now we know that it was The Rock that got the Cavill cameo and Hamada had other plans. He wanted Cavill to cameo in films and then this would eventually lead to a big return with him in Justice League 2. The studio were building towards that but we now know it's no longer happening because things have gone in favour of Gunn's new plan. It's a bold strategy Cotton and whether this works or not we don't really know. We've already covered The Rock's statement and though he said there may be a future with Black Adam, it was very much a We'll keep your CV on file and let you know if any other jobs pop up thing. Anyway, the article then talks about the Cavill cameo, even though Toby Emmerich was looking to recast him since 2018. It then breaks down what could have really shifted focus for Warner Brothers, with the performance of Black Adam potentially being a reason that things were shut down. It says, But Black Adam, which bowed October 21st, fizzled with a $391 million worldwide haul against a 195 budget, plus $40 million in reshoots. This scuttled any plans for more outings with the lightning bolt wielding anti-hero and officially ending the Cavill Superman era. Cavill parted ways with his manager, Johnson's ex-wife Danny Garcia this year, but a source says it was unrelated to the DC drama and she remains a strategic advisor to the actor. Meanwhile, the Johnson Warner's relationship already was wearing thin after Johnson pushed for producing credit on the animated film DC League of Super Pets. This opened in July, but he did little to promote it. The actor also insisted on a tequila bar at the New York premiere of Black Adam, featuring his Terramana brand despite the film being PG-13. Now that last sentence killed me a bit. And hey, which 13 year old wasn't out here drinking tequila? Get the audience as drunk as possible and they might enjoy the movie. I'm just kidding, I, I, I thought Black Adam was fine. It was fine, it, it didn't do anything new but, but it was fine. Now the article then says, his demands increased and the returns just weren't there, notes another insider. Still, box office analyst Paul Durabiadin says, Johnson found himself in a catch-22 with Black Adam. You can't have a more modest budget when this level of talent is involved. Budgets are commensurate with talent involved. Something with a lower budget like Shazam is dubbed a hit because hits are based more on profitability. Shazam earned $366 million worldwide in 2019 off a $100 million budget. De Garbadin notes that Black Adam still managed to crack the box office top 10 for 2022. So yeah, that, that's the main points of the article, and I really think the best thing for going to do is do a full reset, and that will at least quell some of the fandom that are going to be mad that their favourites weren't picked. It will be Gunn playing favourites himself if he chooses some things to keep and not others, and it could end up being an even bigger mess if some things are wiped and some things aren't. They're doing this because they see some parts of the DCEU as a failure, but every project is connected in some ways. For example, Peacemaker is connected to Suicide Squad, and Suicide Squad is Holly, Rick Flag, Captain Boomerang and Waller, who all appeared in the previous Suicide Squad film. That had Superman's death brought up, and it also featured Affleck, so it's connected to Batman v Superman, which is connected to Man of Steel. So I just see it as all being connected, even if they wipe stuff, it's going to make this messy universe even more of a mess, in my opinion. But again, we don't fully know what's happening with it, and those are just the rumours that are coming out. Hopefully, hopefully, the next video I do will be a big announcement on the slate, as these constant drama posts do kind of bog down the universe, I think, and I'd rather be delivering some good news instead of all this constant crap. Anyway, that's the end of the video, and obviously, I'd love to hear your thoughts. We are in a competition right now and giving away Dawn of the Dead and Black Adam with 3 subscribers on the 15th of January and all you have to do to be one of the chance of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe with notifications on and drop a comment below with your thoughts on the news. We pick the comments at random at the end of the month and the winners of the last one are on screen right now so if that's you then message me on Twitter at Heavy Spoilers. If you want something else to watch then make sure you check out one of our breakdowns linked on screen right now. You can, you can have a really positive time, you can have a crap one, it's entirely up to you. See you over there, and yeah, enjoy the rest of your week, and also your weekend. You take care of yourself. Peace.